Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and welcome to another episode of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about this little unicorn, the iPhone XS, and my initial thoughts on it related to photography and filmmaking, so let's get started. Here we go, couple of things to go over in terms of housekeeping, number one, it is like a tree cutting fiesta going on outside. I am in Oregon, by the way, and just back from New York. So of course, with the limited time I have to shoot the episode this week, that is going on. And if you hear chainsaws, then just pretend you're watching a reality television show having to do with, well, there used to be one, cutting down trees here in Oregon. Number two, housekeeping. We've got a book this week. It's not always politically correct, but it is historical. Spielberg, he's on the front. He says something about it, so can't be all bad, right? There's a couple of things in there that might be in today's climate a little bad. But let's go ahead and read a couple here. What do we got here? We've got Broom It. Okay, there it is. Almost the same as Lose It, but with a kinder, gentler connotation. Probably the most polite way of asking for something to be removed from the set. All right, so let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, cowboy, I won't read the whole thing. You probably know what that means. A shot that is framed from the holstered gun level. I need a cowboy. Let's go ahead and frame it up that way. And lastly, let's do Dingle. A branch placed in front of a light to create shadows, also called a branch of loris. And that is a ode to my friend, Matt Jepson, who loves the Branch of Loris. Okay, so you guys can check that out. I'll put that book below the fold. <laughs> uh, what can I say? This here, this beast of a phone here is called the iPhone 6 Plus. And believe it or not, uh, even though I am deeply steeped into the iOS infrastructure and ecosystem, this was until about two weeks ago, my phone. This was what I used. And I think I did a pretty good job waiting for this little unicorn, the XS. Um, I was a little scared of this whole face detection thing. And let me just say right off the bat, this is gonna be a slightly different kind of episode. It's just sort of me rambling about some of my initial thoughts about this new smartphone while they cut down God knows how many trees around me. Um, I don't really care what type of smartphone people use. I have a lot of friends who use iPhones and I have a lot of friends who use Android-based devices. I am just like the godfather in this thing and I'm in deep because of my family and the family sharing and Apple Music and iCloud and everything else. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to go into a different ecosystem at this time. And I have waited a long time to get a new device that has new nifty features. So I do wanna to talk to you about this from the perspective of uh, photography and filmmaking, initial thoughts of using the camera over the last week and a half or so. Um, I'm used to the whole swipe up home thing, the no home button now, the whole scanning my face and all that stuff. And now I'm really starting to look at how I'm gonna use this tool for my everyday life beyond just emails and document retrievals and scanning documents and all that kind of stuff. So how am I gonna use this for photography and filmmaking? So my initial thoughts, first of all, by the way, which is pretty awesome as an educator, is there's this little record button here. When I press that, I can actually record every single thing that's happening on my phone, and then that gets saved to either the app or to the photos library. So when I wanna show you things on this phone, if I'm using it for photography or filmmaking, I can actually just record it, which is pretty cool. Now, there are some fundamental differences um, between the XS and a plus model phone. And one of those big ones is that when you are using it, and I, I'm a little, you know, I wanted to go smaller on my phone here, but when you're using this and you flip this over, let me just show you guys this a little bit. Man, now I'm used to this phone. So here we go. And I flip this over 
and my icons change and they don't on the XS. They will, of course, on the XS Max, uh, but this is one thing I'm getting used to. And you also need to understand, and I think that this is important if you are moving to an iPhone XS from a plus model phone, that all of the marketing speak says that you are getting more screen real estate. And that is true, except for when you're watching movies in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, because you will have pillar boxes on your iPhone when you are doing that. And you will have them on the XS Max as well, I believe. But because the screen is so much larger, you will be getting more screen real estate than you do on your plus model phones. So that's something to consider overall. Um, this processor is an absolute beast in terms of taking photographs. Not that there's anything good that's on there, but check this out. I'm doing a burst right now. Um, I did this the other day. This is ridiculous. I'm up to 70, 80, 90. It just keeps going and going and going, and it will save that as a single file. That's pretty cool. Getting used to the whole dual camera situation, uh, which is pretty awesome, and the portrait mode for photographs is pretty spectacular overall, uh, especially with the new aperture functionality that you have, so you can go in there. There we go, portrait mode. There, aperture 1.4 all the way to a 16, obviously simulated some crazy technology going in here. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. And overall, I'm quite happy about it with a gigantic, humongous butt. And the butt is lens flares. Now, you're gonna go online and you're gonna Google or you're gonna go to Reddit and you're gonna look up lens flares iPhone XS, lens flares iPhone XS Max, and there's gonna be a lot of stuff out there about the problems, and you're gonna find other iPhone models as well. And it's not beautiful big flares, it's tiny little things that are showing up and dots, which I should be able to show you a couple of so that you can see what they look like here. The purpose is not to show you pretty frames here, it's to show you the ugliness of the lens flare. So I think that from everything that I've seen related to this phone, the biggest problem that I have is that lens flare. And it is a real problem, and I don't think that that problem is gonna be solved by switching my phone. It's just not gonna get solved with the way the lensing is here. If I could put a tiny little lens hood on here, I would. But in order to really do that, what you've got to do is get into some of these additional lensing systems, and then you can get a lens hood with those additional lenses. But from what I found so far, nobody is making a tiny little lens hood that will block some of that stray light from getting into these tiny little lenses and then giving you those extremely spotty lens flares. Some of the apps that I'm running on here, uh, Filmic Pro, so that's been in my toolkit for a long time. And I'm actually testing out right now the Smooth 4 from Ziyun. Uh, I'm hopefully saying that correctly. And there is some amazing integration between Filmic Pro and that gimbal system. Uh, you know, video editing wise, we've come a long way with the iPhone now. This is LumaFusion. And it is a pretty beefy little mobile editing solution for your iOS devices. And again, I am very, very impressed with that. And then for photography, I have recently started to use Afterlight, which I am loving. I think it's pretty amazing in terms of what you can do with this app. And once you pick a photograph and you say use, there are all of these amazing different categories for being able to change things with your images. I've got the old standbys in here, like 645 Pro, Pixelmator, uh, and then some of my filmmaking apps, which are sometimes specific to using certain types of hardware, like the Lumu Power for my light and color meter that I use with my phone, Motion Box for some of the Edelchrone or Edelchrone stuff, and then I'm gonna be doing some new stuff with some new light fixtures soon with uh, Luminaire, and then also Stellar from Airy. So I'm excited about that, and that will make its way into what we do here 
on the C47 and episodes of Gearbox. So I think that those are basically my initial thoughts. It's hard for me to dig too deep yet because I've only had the phone for a week and a half. My real feeling here is that this is an incredibly powerful computer that is definitely a tool that has in the past and continues to be something that I use having to do with my whole video production and filmmaking endeavors. And this does not even talk about some of the other apps that I have in those video and photography folders. You really can see that there is a tremendous amount of possibility here. For me, the excitement is seeing in the crystal ball where this is all gonna go. We have this amazing portrait style mode now in a lot of these smartphones. And in the future, guess what we're gonna see? We're gonna start to see this in video as well. With this phone, maybe, maybe not, but in future phones with even faster processors, there's no way that we're not gonna be getting selective focus for our video capture in these devices as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can continue to create free content for you here at the C47 and check out the links below the fold for some of these cool apps that we're talking about. Let me open this thing again. Jeez, that's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.